Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this video presentation on um, how to write the, the end uh, chapters to your thesis, so the findings or the results, the discussion and the conclusion chapters. Uh, now, not all dissertations or theses will follow the same format. It will depend on uh, the discipline you're in and it might also depend on the topic that you're researching. So the actual research might shape how these chapters look in your thesis. So what I'm going to show you here are really just some ideas and some components that most readers will expect to find in these chapters. But um, you will need to think quite carefully and I, I suppose talk to your supervisor about exactly what will go into these chapters. Okay, so um, aside from what goes, you know, what the genre of these chapters is, uh, I want to just discuss conclusions in a thesis generally and to show you how they relate to uh, higher order thinking skills. So um, your last couple of chapters tend to have a pyramid shape. Um, you begin with the very close findings from your data collection. So you're taking your data, you're analyzing them, uh, and in the analysis, you're pulling things apart. So if you were collecting interview transcripts, then what you would be doing is taking those interview transcripts, pulling them apart, regrouping and reorganizing them in order to come up with some kind of result. So you're taking the close findings, and this is the analysis. Uh, the next type of conclusion you have is the synthesis. Uh, and this is usually the discussion. And what this means is you take those findings that you've extracted from your source data and you now try to make sense of them. So you, you're trying to um, put them back into a context. And you would do that by going back to the literature, uh, referring to practice, looking at policies, if, if that's your particular area. But you, you're synthesizing your findings with something else. The third set of conclusions is um, evaluation and that's where you take a step back and you say okay now that we've been through this process what can we say and at the end of the day you might say well the study would have been stronger if I'd done this this and this or that this data was exceptionally rich um, but perhaps it needed a longer time period so so there you are showing um, your reader your critical assessment of your results. Okay, uh, let's move on to the first set of uh, conclusions, which is presenting your findings or results in some way. Uh, I guess one of the key things to understand about this chapter is that you're not putting all your results in. You, well, you're not putting all your data in. Uh, in this particular chapter. What you're trying to do is to organize it in some way and then present it to the reader. So those are two different steps, organizing and presenting. Uh, and in the organizing and presenting, you then can work out what the key results will be that you want to present in this chapter. For most uh, dissertations, you will collect um, probably way more results than you'll actually show. Um, so the, the organization and, and the analysis takes place away from the thesis. And what you need to show in this chapter is what you've done because your reader can't see that. So in this chapter, you report on the analysis process and then what you found, which will be the key, key uh, findings. Um, so the way to do this would be to perhaps go back to your research questions and to work out your results according to the research questions if that's a useful framework. Uh, there might be other ways of organizing the data. Perhaps if you did a survey, you would present the data according to the questions that you asked. Um, yeah, just think about how you would organize this data so that your reader can get it in digestible chunks. Uh, you might want to arrange it chronologically as the results emerge. So, for example, if you did a small survey and then an interview, you might present the survey results first and then the interview results. Uh, however, if you're looking at your results thematically, then you might 
present the themes and use the source data from both the survey and the interview results in, under the themes. Um, your particular research field may have some other ways of organizing the research. Perhaps a context is important on land, in water, something like that. Um, so just think about the most logical way to present your results. Um, and then there are lots of ways of actually presenting the data. You know, how, how, what interesting ways can you think of to actually present this data so that your reader can see it visually as well as, you know, read the explanation or the mediation that you're giving in the text. So can you put in, um, you know, boxes with narratives, profiles of your participants, um, tables with kind of themes with descriptions, diagrams, graphs, images. Think quite creatively about how you can present this data. And if you do uh, present your data visually, then the text needs to explain that visual. So um, although the visual should be able to, you know, the reader should be able to read it uh, and it should stand alone, the text should still explain what's in the visual and why that's important. So in your findings section, really what you're doing is you're describing the results and um, you're showing what those results show. You want to make it as readable as possible and really what you're showing is the story of these results. Uh, not all dissertations separate the results from the discussion. So you might have a thesis where you present the results and then under each section you provide a discussion as well. Uh, that's a decision you'll have to make. Some dissertations have more than one results chapter. So for example, if you had survey data as well as interview data, you might have different chapters showing the results from those different sources. Um, yeah, there are many different ways to present data and very creative ways. So have a look at other examples. If you can read other dissertations, do that. But look at published papers. I mean, people present their results in very interesting ways, you know, diagrams or organograms or um, relationship uh, diagrams, uh, you know, which is really, an, you know, that's an interesting way to present your results. So um, in terms of how you write this, you really are describing the results at this point. It's only in, this, in the discussion that you begin to uh, synthesize and analyze those results or interpret them. At this point, you, you're just showing the results of your analysis. So that requires description. You're using very precise language in this chapter. I mean, this is what gives your thesis reader confidence in your results. Is, is how much attention you pay to precision and accuracy. So if you use a term in your results, you know, at the beginning, so say perhaps you use teacher, and then um, towards the end you're using, a t you're using lecturer, right? So there's an inconsistency there, and your reader's going to say, are we talking about the same people? Is it the same concept? Is there a different approach attached to lecturer? Um, so make sure that your terms that you're using are, are accurate throughout this, this particular stage and throughout the thesis generally. Um, yeah, so this chapter presents the results of your analysis. In the next chapter, the discussion chapter, this is where you begin to interpret uh, and pull together and synthesize um, the results. So what you're doing is you're taking your close results and you're now saying, okay, what does this mean? Uh, again here, you might want to work out how you want to present the discussion. So you might go back to your research questions and actually present the discussion uh, as, um, you know, you, you probably wouldn't really be answering the research questions, but you'd be addressing them. So that might be one way to shape the discussion. Uh, another way might be to return to the literature and to uh, perhaps pick up on themes in the literature and then show how your results um, can be interpreted in the light of the literature. So think about how you want to present this discussion chapter. What's the story you're going to tell? At some point in the discussion chapter, you want to um, find closure on your research questions. So your, your reader must be able to see 
that you have somehow answered those research questions. And somewhere in the discussion chapter, you also want to go back to the literature. Um, so you want to show how your findings fit the literature, the theory, and possibly even practice. So if you already have um, a chapter on findings, then in the discussion chapter, you might want to summarize those findings at the beginning. Um, and what you're trying to show is how does your research differ, confirm, add to the literature? How does it contribute and where does it differ? You might want to do this around particular themes. Um, as I've said, you might want to use the research questions. Uh, and really what you're doing is you're describing the broader patterns, principles, relationships. Um, so these this is really where your findings fit in to these broader principles, patterns and relationships. Okay, so in the discussion chapter, this is where you make knowledge claims. So this is where you're showing the contribution of your thesis. Uh, you're saying, after doing this research, this is what I can now claim. Um, and this is where the study contributes to knowledge. Uh, and the other, well, the third thing that you're doing in, in this particular chapter is to show the originality of your work. So as you're comparing it to the literature, you're emphasizing where your work is different and where it fills uh, a gap, in an, an existing gap in the literature. So the discussion chapter discusses and evaluates conflicting results. So perhaps in your findings, uh, some things fitted quite neatly, but some things didn't. This is where you might discuss that. You might also discuss unexpected findings, um, that you have you know, difficulty explaining. That might be a place to, to discuss it. Uh, you could also identify weaknesses and limitations. Um, and you explain the implications of your findings, why they're important, how they affect our understanding of the research problem you've identified. And at some point you'll revisit the conceptual framework, uh, discuss how useful it was in terms of understanding this research problem, um, or perhaps, you know, limitations if that's important. So the discussion chapter is extremely important in the thesis because honestly this is where the meat is and this is where your reader really wants to find out what you know. <clears throat> and if, um, if someone is going to cite your dissertation, this is the chapter they would cite. Uh, so it's quite an important one. So let's have a look at an outline in the column on the right. You could, this is just a suggestion, but this is what you could do, is summarize the findings, uh, interpret the findings, uh, and by this I mean make sense of it for your reader in terms of answering your, your research questions. So here you would explain the results, you'd interpret them, you might deal with issues that you hadn't expected. Then compare those findings to the literature, and this is where you are synthesizing and, and maybe even then uh, make sense of it even further, the implications of these findings. You know, do they improve, add, or change the field? Then the evaluation of the study. So this is the critical overview of the study. And then finally, you may want to um, put in a section on recommendations or future research. And the recommendations could be recommendations for practice, uh, recommendations for policy, um, recommendations for future research. The recommendations is not something that is always found in, in these chapters. It depends on your particular field. If you're in a discipline that is much more um, professionally oriented, you're more likely to find a recommendation section. So just some tips um, to help you on the way is uh, once you've written your chapter, then um, go through the chapter with a different color pen and play the dissenting voice. So wherever you make an argument, then make a counter-argument. And this is just to see whether or not your results will stand up to that counter-argument. Uh, at this stage, you may be very tired of your thesis, so you want to try and see your results with new eyes. If you can get someone else to help you, they will be able to see how important your research is, whereas your view might be a bit more jaded. And you might think, well, there's nothing new here. 
And then think of creative ways of presenting the discussion chapter. Put in visuals, diagrams of your entire thesis, if you can, to show visually how everything fits together. Um, in some dissertations, there will be a conclusion chapter as well. Uh, in other dissertations, the conclusion is a section of the discussion chapter. So this is something you would need to decide. But generally, in the discussion and the conclusion chapter, you're not introducing any new material. What you're doing is you're making sense of, of the material that you have already presented in the thesis. So if at some point you find a, a text, a source that's absolutely brilliant and helps you to interpret your, your results, then you would need to go back and build that source into your literature review um, so that it wouldn't be new in this chapter. So the conclusion really pulls everything together for your reader. So this is where you summarize your entire project. But rather than just a descriptive summary, what you're trying to show in, in summarizing is how everything fits together, that there's an alignment with what you set out to do, how you went about doing it, and then what you found. And that what you found really justifies the, the rationale that you claimed at the beginning for doing this research. And that what you found is really significant and important. Um, and that the evidence accumulated throughout the whole thesis and the arguments made throughout the whole thesis really come down to this point here where you show uh, why it, it all makes sense. You might also include the critical evaluation of the research project in this section rather than in the discussion. Uh, the same thing with future research. Uh, you might pose new questions that came out of this research as a way of ending off the thesis. And you might put the recommendations in the conclusion rather than in the discussion. But the main point of a conclusion chapter or a conclusion section um, is to get across a key message. And the key message is really what is the, the main message that you want to get across in this thesis. So if somebody had to cite your thesis, what is the message you would like them to be able to cite? Okay, so that's the, um, the last three chapters generally in a thesis. Sometimes it's only two. And that is the analysis chapter where you present the results and findings. Uh, the discussion chapter, and then the conclusion. And sometimes the discussion and the conclusion are collapsed into one, and sometimes the results chapters are expanded into two, and sometimes even three chapters. Okay, good luck with your um, analysis and results chapters. Thanks. Bye.